In this video, I'm going to show you how to spray walls using an airless sprayer. And then I'm going to let you in on five different tips that I wish I knew before I sprayed my first job. Let's get started. I'm going to start out by letting you in on tip number one. Tip number one is preparation before you spray. That is just as important, if not more important, than the technique you use to spray your walls. If you take a look behind me, you see the windows all masked up, you see the masking up around the ceilings, all that is done before you spray. And if you need to know how to do those things, check out the video in the top right hand corner of the screen. That's going to show you how to do all the masking. And I actually made two different videos, one on how to mask the windows and the rooms themselves, and the other one on how to mask around the ceilings like that. So that's tip number one. So now let's go ahead and actually spray the walls and I'll let you in on the other tips. The brand of paint I'm gonna be spraying is this Valspar Signature and the color is Ice Cube. And it's just a slight tint of gray, but it's primarily a white color. And now you wanna make sure you stir it for at least five to 10 minutes. And if you don't wanna stir it, you can shake the container. A lot of times I'll shake it if I'm gonna be cutting in because I like to use the spout from the lid in order to get it into my handy paint pail. In this case, when I spray, I just take the lid off because I'm gonna be placing the sprayer into the bucket of paint. So do that first, and I'm not gonna go over how to prime the paint sprayer because I made a video on that. You can check out the video in the top right hand corner of the screen if you need to know how to do that. But I'm just primarily going over the technique of spraying in this video. Something else you might wanna consider for top performance of your sprayer is running your paint through a paint strainer first. So that way if there's any debris in the paint that you don't see, it doesn't clog up the end of your paint sprayer. Graco has the reversible tip to where if it does get clogged, you just turn it and spray it and then it pushes the clog out, then you turn it back, and that works great. And honestly, it rarely clumps up whenever I use new paint, but if you're using old paint, that's something you definitely should do. Um, they definitely recommend you straining all together, but I actually don't with new paint, but that's up to you if you feel like you need to. As for my setup, I'm using this Graco Magnum Pro X17 airless sprayer. Right here on this side is the control that controls the amount of pressure in the sprayer. And if you're gonna be using the roller attachment, you wanna keep it down in here, but that's for another video. And this knob here is what you use to prime the pump. As for the gun, I got a 20 inch extension and a 30 inch extension with a 515 tip on it. And that's just a good all around tip for latex. And that's all there is to the actual sprayer, so let's get to spraying. Before you start spraying, be sure to invest in a respirator and wear it because you do not want to inhale that fine latex paint while you're spraying. And also, I like to wear latex gloves and a bunny suit. It just helps protect my clothes. Any of the stuff that you see me wearing or any of the painting supplies I'm using can be found in my Amazon store. The link is in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I get a small commission, but it's a nurture cost to you to help support the channel. Let's get to spraying some paint. I'm gonna start by spraying in the farthest room of the house because the hose that's hooked to the sprayer tends to wanna to rub against the walls while you're moving throughout the house. So you don't wanna have the hose rubbing freshly painted walls. So I found it best to start in the farthest room and work my way back towards the other side of the house where the sprayer is located. So I'm here in this room. I already have the ceiling masked, as you can see, and the ceiling's already been painted. If you need to know how to do that, check the video in the top right hand corner of the screen. But it's already painted, masked up, and this floor is going to get flooring over it so I don't have to cover up the floor. So this is a new construction job. And when you spray, you want to keep the tip of your sprayer about 12 inches away from the wall. And I got this extension because with these nine foot ceilings, it's much easier to move up and down the wall without actually having to move my whole body closer to the wall. So that's just something to keep in mind. So eight foot ceilings, I could probably get away with just a 40 inch extension or a 30 inch only. But with these nine foot ceilings, it's definitely a little easier. Be sure to use a pattern in which your overlap is 50% of your previous stroke so that way you get full coverage. The technique I use when I spray is I just go straight up the wall and until I get to the ceiling and then I switch over real quick and go back down. Then once I get down to the floor, swipe over real quick and go right back up because you don't want to linger up here and spray real nice and slow because you're going to get a bunch of paint collect up here. And if you go real slow at the transition at the bottom, you're going to do the same thing. So you just need to go down and then switch over real quick and go right back up. 
and then at the top switch over and go back down at a nice controlled motion. Now that I got some paint sprayed on the wall, tip number two is back roll using an 18 inch roller. This is Purdy brand with a 3 8 nap. I like to use the 3 8 nap on my finished coats. This is going to get two coats by the way, but it's important to back roll, especially if you're not used to spraying all the time. So all you got to do is just quickly roll right over what you just sprayed like that. Tip number three, carry a fresh bucket of water with you because if you need to take a break or if you're storing this sprayer overnight and coming back the next day to spray, all you gotta do is lift your paint out of, or your sprayer out of the bucket of paint to the bucket of water. What I like to do if I'm storing this overnight in the bucket of water is just take a stiff bristle brush and just clean the dried paint that's on the hoses that's not submerged in the water. Then after you clean your hoses off, just take your sprayer tip, get it a little damp, clean it with your bristle brush real quick, and then just place it in the bucket of water as well. And then all we gotta do after that is unplug your sprayer and then just let it set. I don't let it set longer than a day or two like this and I'm not coming back. Any longer than that, you need to clean it all the way. And this is good too, like I said, for taking breaks. Tip number four, practice inside of a walk-in closet or practice anywhere where you're gonna be hanging cabinets. So a kitchen's a good place to practice spraying as well. Those areas are gonna get covered up with either closet rods or get covered up with cabinets. So you don't have too much to lose if you do get the spray, not as even as you'd like. But again, if you back roll, it should help you eliminate that problem anyways. You also wanna make sure to wear safety goggles when you're using your airless sprayer as well. The reason why I put this time lapse in here is so you can better understand the process of spraying with your airless sprayer and then back rolling. So as you can see, you go as far as you can go before the paint starts setting up, then you gotta grab your roller and back roll. Now I'm gonna to demonstrate to you how you switch your airless sprayer over to a new bucket of paint. You simply just pick it up out of the bucket of paint that is empty and transfer it over to the fresh bucket. And now in order to get the remainder paint that's in the bottom of the bucket into the new bucket, what I do is I set a bucket with something to prop it up a little higher than the bucket height and then I'll just take the last few inches of paint that's in the bucket and then let it slowly fill up into the fresh bucket. And clearly before you do this you got to use some of the paint out of the new bucket. This wall was a little tricky. As you can see, I had to get up on the step ladder in order to reach all the way up to the top. And I took my roller and rolled right up to the masking paper and then back rolled like normal, obviously. But I wanted to show you, sometimes you gotta improvise and do what it takes to get the job done. Tip number five, be sure to turn off your HVAC while you're spraying the paint because it can clog up your air filters very quick and also you don't want to get sucked down into your HVAC unit. And also while we're talking about it, make sure you go ahead and take the mounting bracket off for your HVAC thermostat because you don't want to have to paint right up to it and cut around it. Just a simple tip to allow you to get a nice finish. And also, I just let it hang here because I do turn the HVAC unit back on after the overspray is settled. Something else to consider too when you're going to be spraying your house is getting different extensions. This is a longer extension. I hooked this one onto this extension and then put this tip on it to spray these cathedral ceilings when I did the ceilings. If you need to see the video on it, check out the video link in the top right hand corner of the screen. That's me spraying the ceilings. But I also take this 20 inch tip and adapt it right to the gun when I spray closets and places like bathrooms and hallways. So that way, if you don't have a 
long extension on, you can easily get into the tight areas. In some places, you could even probably just put the tip on without any extension. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to use an extension, but it's definitely preferable if you're going to be doing walls. So I just wanted to let you know there's options when it comes to spray tips. So I got the second coat on about two or three hours ago. So now the paint is dried enough to where we can remove the masking off the ceilings. So I'm going to show you my technique in removing that without tearing the paint off the wall. This is the wall we sprayed at the very beginning of this video. The second coat, like I said, is already dried. So now we need to remove all this masking. So I got asked in my last video when I was spraying paint, how soon should you take the masking off and the tape? And the answer is as soon as possible. So if you get it all done in one day, all coats and you can take it off, great. If you gotta wait till the next day, then you have to wait till the next day to apply the second coat and remove it. But the answer is as soon as possible. All right, so what I do, I start in a corner just like I do most of the masking and painting and then I'll just start peeling off this tape. And what I like to do is pull this paper off first. And the reason why I do that is because it lets that tape act more pliable when you pull it off. And I'll show you why that's important. So first thing, I go ahead and just rip off the paper. All right, and now we gotta get back in this corner and remove that. Remove this tape off the ceiling. And now we got to start back here. And what you want to do is pull the tape back onto itself. So like this and work into the corner real slow. And the key here is slow and steady. You don't want to rip off this tape because it could rip the paint off the wall pretty easy. So you don't want that, and especially if it's been setting for a day or two. So we're going to go real slow until we get into the corner where the tape is. All right, so now that we're back in that corner, now we're going to make sure the tape is folded over on itself and pull it off like this. And that way it kind of folds over and doesn't pull the paint. It kind of cuts the paint as you're taking it off. So you still could have a uh, chance of pulling the paint off even then. And if you do, you just got to repair and paint it. Unfortunately, that is the risk to taping off for painting. Right, so nice and slow and steady. All right, so that's all you got to do. Now you just do that to all the paper and tape that's on the ceilings. This is what the final product will look like up close. Nothing wrong with that. It looks really nice. If you're not familiar with my channel, my name's Josh. The channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. I also have an Amazon store. The link is in the description below. If you do make a purchase through it, I get a small commission, but it's a no extra cost to you, and a lot of the products I use while making these videos can be found there. So I got a lot of masking I got to remove yet. So I also got another room I'm going to try to get painted before the day's over, so I better get to it. And again, we build houses from the ground up here, so be sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.